Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel here in beautiful Manasquan, New Jersey. Remember that 1961 Airstream Bambi travel trailer renovation I started about two and a half years ago? A lot of you have been following along. It's been a very popular YouTube series. Well, now I wanna show you, it's done. I completed the project. I'm gonna give you a full detailed tour today. And I wanna show you what I've done to it and how I preserved it, as well as some of the products that I've used. The Bambi is one of the most iconic Airstream travel trailers ever made. And in 1961, they built their first Bambi travel trailer. And they only built a handful of these trailers between 1961 and 1963. It took me a long time to find one. This one happened to be very few owners. Uh, original owners had it for quite its life, about into the 90s. And then it was purchased by someone that did some renovations and upfits on the inside. And then they sold it to someone in another state that wanted to convert it into a bar, but they never completed the project, which I'm happy. So I found one that was in mostly complete condition, original condition, and my restoration attempt was to kind of make it look somewhat period correct, but keep a lot of the original character. So if you notice, I didn't polish it to mirror shine. Back in 1961, people didn't polish their Airstream travel trailers. It was bare aluminum and they left it that way. It was later in the 60s that Airstream started clear coating them and that would preserve the finish. These will naturally tarnish and I kind of like that look. Maybe down the road, I'll polish it. But let me show you some of the details. This trailer is 16 feet. That's from the ball to the very back bumper. It uses a two inch ball. And uh, I weighed it when I was done. I added a little, quite a bit of weight to the trailer because there's a lot more features that it has now than it would have had in 1961. Uh, the hitch weight is 290 pounds. Originally it had a 2,500 pound axle system. I upgraded to a 3,500 pound Dexter axle system. So the GVWR is gonna be 3,500 pounds and the dry weight is 2,650. So that's what it weighs before I put water and gear inside. So I have plenty of margin to add additional weight and I didn't add air conditioning to it. Back in 1961, these trailers didn't have air conditioning and aesthetically I didn't like the way it looked. So I'll show you what I do for air conditioning on the inside. The exterior width, it's seven foot wide and the exterior height is eight foot six. Airstream, when they built these trailers back then, they would stretch form some of these panels here and they would buck rivet all these panels together to get a nice tight seal all the way around. And then they would wrap the whole underbelly with aluminum and it would have insulation below there. So it can withstand some cold weather camping. One of the favorite features I have in this trailer is the entry door. But one of the major flaws of this door, it's a suicide door. And this trailer flexes quite a bit when you're towing it. So if you don't have this door secure, it will fly open. And that's exactly what happened to one of the previous owners of this trailer. This door flew open and boasted a hole in the side skin and made the whole door all wonky. So I spent many, many hours reconfigurating this door and fixing this door so it sits tight so it doesn't leak. And I patched aluminum here. I just had this aluminum cut out and riveted in place so there's no longer a hole here. The hinges are stainless steel here. And this is the screen door. So let me show you how this works. <clears throat> Open up the main door. It's got a regular residential style lock. There's different locks they had available back then. You unhook here, you unhook here, and this, this part detaches from the main door and there's your screen. So if you want fresh air, this just snaps right in here and that will give you fresh air while you're camping in the trailer. And there's also four windows that open inside that have insect screens on them. These are some of the original like stickers that people had. They're not really stickers, they're like metal, but some of the Airstream rallies. Airstream is a brand that is 90 years old now. They started in 1931, and this was their 30th anniversary edition. Uh, and the previous owners went to different rallies. Uh, there's even a rally 
that Airstream had in Cadillac, Michigan in 1966 that this trailer was at with its original owners. It's pretty cool. And uh, Airstream has a club called the WBCCI, the Wally Bam Caravan Club International. And uh, you could become a member and you put your big red numbers on the exterior of the trailer and people could identify you that are in a club. And uh, this was on Michigan 22, a beautiful road that goes all the way up the uh, top of Michigan. But you can see this has heavy gaskets on it that keeps it snug up against the main door to keep it uh, shut tight. And then the main door itself has a deadbolt and uh, the previous owner, I'm gonna take these off eventually, added these extra latches that you could put like regular padlocks on. I just use them as a fail safe so just in case the door flew open. So when you bring this around, you could buckle it right here to the body and that keeps it secure so it doesn't fly around on a windy day. Over the door, there's an eyebrow that is uh, made on an English wheel. And the original one was all smashed in. So I had Colin Hyde at Colin Hyde Restorations re replicate a brand new one for me. And uh, he shipped it to me and I had it installed. And then I added a aluminum grab handle to the trailer to get in a little bit easier. So there's a lot of details I'm gonna show you on the outside, but before we do, let's head inside so you can check out this trailer. But before we do, Check out these marker lights, these side marker lights. Uh, these are uh, replicas that Vintage Trailer Supply makes. And it's very important to have these operational and have your headlights on when you're towing so you're more visible. And when you turn on the headlights, it turns on your upper marker lights front and rear. And it really allows people when you're towing the trailer down the road to know that you're wider and taller than the vehicle in the front. So always tow with your headlights on. The subfloor that's in this trailer is Tunga Groove plywood, 5 8 inch, and it's the original. There was no rot, there was no soft spots, no delamination in the floor anywhere, so I was able to reuse the original floor. But I had to plug some holes up, I had to sand it nice and smooth, and I had to replace the original asbestos tiles. I had to get them all out of there, get the whole trailer cleaned down, and then I put vinyl flooring throughout. So this is one sheet of vinyl that goes through the whole entire floor of the trailer. I put that in first and I laid all the cabinetry on top of it. And I even polished up the original thresholds here. I replaced all the gaskets here at the entry door so that closes nice and tight. And then I used as many original components as I possibly could in this trailer. Some of the cabinets in here are original, but I refaced them and reconfigured them so they're a little bit fresher. Back in the day, these were built for lightweight cars and not a lot of people had big trucks to pull back then. So the whole idea with this is to keep it as light as possible. So it only had thin Luan board and thin oak strips and very, very lightweight. But over the years, they were all warped and uh, there was a fire in this trailer at one point. Everybody decided to repaint the cabinets, repaint the shell. So what I had to do is have, once I gutted the whole entire trailer, and you can see that in the full series that I do, I had to uh, sand it after I, uh, sandblasted it, sand it, and then repaint the whole skin. And then I hand carried every component that I recreated into this trailer. If you notice here, this is the original mirror that the trailer came with, but I made walnut top and bottom brackets. Originally it just had plastic clips. And I templated the original wall that was here uh, with uh, a birch thin eighth inch wood, and I stained it gray. The original wood color was this natural oak. And I have the Airstream Club Wally Byam hat and the Wally Byam hook here, which was a signature thing back in the day when people would wear their berets when they went to Airstream rallies. Over here, I have a front lounge area, and this is 78 inches long by 24 inches wide. So if you remove all these cushions here, this could make into a bed. And I've slept here several nights, and it's plenty wide. It's just like sleeping on a sofa at home, but more comfortable. These cushions are out of a production model 2019 Airstream Nest. I did a lot of measurements and I'm around a lot of Airstreams, so I figured what size cushions I needed. And then I found an Airstream trailer that's currently made that had similar cushion layout and they actually fit perfectly. This is a whole kit out of a brand new Airstream Nest travel trailer and no modifications, they just fit right in place. So Airstream 
when they built these back then, they build similar designs today that wind up having the same uh, dimensions. So the cushion material, the foam is very high density foam. The <laughs> stitching is absolutely beautiful. Uh, has zippers in the back so you replace the cushion covers. Just look at the way these are put together. They did an excellent job. <clears throat> Over here on the wall, I have a fire extinguisher. That's very important for safety that you build uh, an RV that has smoke, carbon dioxide, LP leak detector, and a fire extinguisher, and a second egress. So these side windows are big enough to get out. The bench here, uh, and I'm gonna get into, lift this up a little bit later. There's a lot of cool stuff underneath it. I did a solid walnut front face to it. And then all the drawers I made myself, but the drawers, they don't come out. Well, back in the day, they didn't have hardware to keep them in. So what you would do is there's a block of wood underneath here. You just have to lift it up slightly and that allows the drawer to come out. And then I made these, I have a whole video on how I made these. Then I actually burned my, my name into them uh, as a signature that I made them. But I got vintage style hardware that I used throughout. And then to hold the floor down on the edges, I use the banding that Airstream uses on their new trailers. And this floor is not glued down, it's just tacked down and the furniture holds it down throughout. This portion here, this used to be a drawer in the original configuration. And by the way, I didn't change the configuration. The furniture's all in the same spot. A lot of the pieces original just redone, but this flips down now and I have the Victron Energy uh, battery display so I can see my battery charge. I have a battery disconnect switch and then I also have the AC DC breakers and fuses here. Uh, so this is a modern style uh, fuse distribution box, uh, but it's hidden so you can't see that uh, it's it's newer. And the, the re when I built this trail, I wanted to try to make it look original, but a more of a fresh look to it. And back then they had a little fold out table that would store in the wardrobe. I went with the lagoon table and I had Tablelegs.com, uh, they built this uh, walnut top for me. So they did an excellent job. I gave them the dimensions, told them what edge I wanted, the angle I wanted, and they built it. And then I just bolted it on top of the lagoon table. So you can lock in where you want it positioned in a very specific area. And that table, once you get it fully locked, uh, will be in that position. And then if you want to change the position, you just swing it out of the way. So this is also a bed here. So this bed is 78 inches long by 41 inches wide when it's folded out. Or if you just wanna sleep on it without folding it out, it's 26 inches wide. Uh, but I just pushed the table out of the way and this now is a good area for sleeping. If you look up front here, <clears throat> This is my air conditioning. So what I did was uh, I just bought USB powered fans, uh, vintage style fans, and that will blow air around. So that's the only ventilation I have is these two fans in this trailer. And I slept in this on some pretty hot nights and I was very comfortable. Uh, there's also Ocean Air roller shades that I added. Newer style Airstreams have these shades. So these will come down. And if you take a look down here, there's a recess that this hooks into on both sides. And that keeps the, the shade down. And then when you pull down and lift up, that releases the shade. And then to open the window, you pull on the hardware here. And you gotta wind both window levers and this is your insect screen and these are fully removable you just twist the little tabs and the screen pops right out and then behind here i have weather stripping so bugs don't get behind the screen and then when you're ready to bring it down just wind both handles evenly and that's the trick one's faster than the other it's not going to go down and you lock it in place the color of the aluminum shell that I did is uh, early 60s Chevrolet. It's an off-white color. Looks more tan once everything came back inside. Uh, over here on the back here, there's a ledge. So I could put things up here like plants and the fan. Uh, but this all folds down. We're gonna see it a little bit and there's some systems hidden back here. I have the water pump switch. So there's a 12 volt demand pump on board. I could turn that on. Pump comes on, pressurizes the system and shuts off. 
And then I even went with old school style labels. People back then would label things, these old label makers that would stamp uh, the letters in. Uh, I went and I had someone on Etsy make them for me. Then I have the regular 120 uh, electrical outlets. So there's three of them on board. And then I also have an inverter on board, a Victron 1200 watt inverter, pure sine wave. And uh, I could turn that on uh, through the cabinet here, and then that will power this outlet here so I can run off an inverter. And then I also have 12 volt supplied USB 5 volt sockets here so I could power the fan and, and charge devices. And then I even plugged up the original hole for the cable that would come in because there's a mast antenna that used to be on this trailer. And then these cushions all hold together with Velcro. That's what keeps them in place. And these lights are the original lights. But what I did was I stripped the brass, I guess, off of it. And uh, what I did was I dipped it in CLR. Uh, it's a solution you could buy at a home center uh, for calcium, lime, and rust. And it strips the finish off and then I polished them and then I painted them silver. And these lights have two elements in them. These are 12 volt DC on one side and AC on the other side. We're not plugged into electricity right now. So you could decide which side you would on depending if you're plugged in at a campground or running off your battery system. Let's talk about battery system. I went with a Battleborn 100 amp hour 12 volt group 24 series size battery that powers the whole entire trailer. And uh, I didn't go with more because there's really not a lot of room for more and there's very limited payload in this trailer. Uh, so you gotta be conscious of space and weight. If you look over here in the wall, there's another one of these lights that I, I restored. And the interior height here is six foot four. And the interior width, well, so exterior is seven foot, so it's about four inches less on the interior and the width. And the interior length, the trailer outside is 16 feet. Well, it's 12 feet, eight inches on the inside. So it's a great amount of space in here. Over on this side, same thing. I followed through with the walnut face here and I used uh, plywood here, half inch plywood for the base. And I cut little holes in it so you could lift and pull the bed out when it's time for that. And I put the carpet padding here that allows a little bit of gap between the wood and the cushion and allows the cushions to grip better. And the same thing with these drawers. These drawers come out a little bit, but they stop. And you gotta lift up the lounge just a little bit and that gets the drawer out. If you take the drawer out all the way, you could see the guides that they had, these are the original guides. They just sanded them down and reused them. And there's a guide here. And the vinyl floor goes all throughout the whole entire trailer. I made this face frame out of solid oak. Originally it was Luan on top of poplar wood, all stapled in place. I just went with solid. I think it's a little bit more stable. And then I have an access point here to get to the lagoon table, the adjuster to bring the table up and down. So I could reach through here and make the adjustment up and down or remove it completely. There's even a furnace duct back there because I have a Truma Eco Plus gas electric heater and water heater on board with uh, three vents throughout the trailer. <clears throat> Over here, there's another drawer. And in this drawer, the original wardrobe was one big door. And on the back of it, it had the Airstream lifetime warranty. Back in the day, Airstream would give a lifetime warranty to the original owner of the trailer. So this is the wardrobe door. This is the color that the wood used to be. Um, and I cut the door because the door wasn't, you could see the, the burning of the fire. Uh, it was not savable, but this was savable. And I just put it underneath plexiglass. It's kind of a good memento of the original trail. It has the VIN number on it and everything. And then this drawer here, has the sheets and all the bedding in it. And all these drawers are the same exact size. And each drawer took about four hours to build. So you can imagine the amount of time I have in this trailer. I'm messing about 400 hours. And I'm, a, I'm a guessing with labor and cost of materials, I'm probably into this for over 65,000. And the original investment just for the trailer as is was $18,000. There's another ocean air roller shade here that pulls down and hooks in. 
and it has the same hardware and uh, these are original screens they're just aluminum screen material and I went with the vinyl just so you could see through them a little bit better behind the lounge is a ledge that is separate from the backrest of the bed so the way that this whole bed goes out is like this you fold these over okay and it's it's difficult you got to keep it square you got to pull the backrest and you clear the little ledge there and these holes are here so you don't pinch your hand you lift up on the bed and you slide it out okay the back goes down once you get this all square it lays down flat this piece goes oh, let's move it forward a little bit okay this piece goes here underneath the ledge this piece goes here underneath the ledge okay that way you're not underneath the, the ledge fully and then you got this cushion here and this cushion here and you got a nice size bed that you can lay on and uh, you can have two people on here and you can have one people across the front sofa and when it's uh, time to get up in the morning you want to get rid of the bed well you don't have to because there's enough room to get around but if you wanted to you just join these two cushions back together at Airstream I got to say it again they do an excellent job with their cushions and their travel trailers and then you lift this up but uh let's check out behind here before you put all this away you can see in here is the original this is all original bed frame that airstream had i just reused it i cleaned it as best as i could and i reused it and you can see the truma hot air supply for the heat for the front of the trailer and then you can also see all the pex tubing i used there's white for uh, cold water and red for hot water and then the wiring harness I made, this has marine grade uh, stranded uh, wire here. There's, there's six different circuits I have inside this loom here. And then I have the AC current. This is a 12-2 wire. I have five different circuits in here for all the different electrical outlets. I also pre-wired it since I had everything apart for air conditioning. So I could put rooftop air conditioning later if I ever decided to. So there's a special circuit run just for that. This bed lifts up, slides in place. Gotta watch your fingers as always. You lift up this ledge here, that snaps in. That's so this all doesn't come apart when you're towing. And you flip these up and they stay put pretty much. Over here is a junction that Airstream had originally for uh, the original uh, 120 volt outlets, which are these two back here and the lights, which run on AC and DC. Above, I have a roof vent and it's just a vent. It's not a fan. So you just spin these little knobs here evenly and then the vent lifts up and there's an insect screen here allows a lot of airflow through but there's no fan built in but this is the same size opening for air conditioning so what i did was to put a junction here and i pre-wired right into through the roof structure here uh, for air conditioning for future this is my uh, smoke detector i have on board and then I did a video, I redid all these cabinets, I made them. It was a whole video series on uh, remaking everything, but this is the pantry slash wardrobe area. And I, you have a curtain here that pulls across on the track. So if you don't wanna look at the stuff inside the wardrobe, you could do that. And then up top, I have uh, a rod here for hanging clothes. And then I have a shelf. This is a aluminum, piece of aluminum bent and it lays on top of these oak rails here. And I could put a blanket and I use these like kids lunch boxes a lot. And you can put a lot of uh, items inside of them and they're soft and they kind of conform to the space. Another one of those Wally hooks. So if I wanna hang a backpack here in this uh, Airstream portfolio, I have all the manuals for all the components that I put inside this trailer, just like Airstream does today. And then there's two folding chairs that are in this compartment here that fit and snap into this 
tray here that I made. So I made this tray so the chairs could stay put when you're towing. And then you just lift them out of the little groove and you could get them out and use them outside. And then behind here, I have leveling blocks, wheel chocks, and a tool to remove the lug nuts for the tire. And then the wheel well cuts in part of this compartment here as well. And then there's also two more shelves. If you want to take a peek in here, there's one shelf here and there's one below and I have all the pillows and bedding down here. And I have this stick here for the kitchen. So these drawers, the way they would keep them shut back in the day is you slide this through. And that's what keeps them shut. So if one moves out, it's gonna have the resistance of this one. And uh, that's the way you keep your uh, items from flying around when you're, when you're towing. And then over here, I have a shell. So this is a oak veneer. This is solid oak. And this is over the original cabinet that was there. I have, you know, all my components I need for when I'm camping, towels in here. And check out these little latches here. That keeps the door shut. And you press a little button, that moves in and that opens the door. I got cleaning supplies in here, uh, dishes, cups, pans. And then down here, this is where the original furnace was. I removed that furnace and sealed up the hole and I built a box over the wheel well. And I have a trash pail and then I have laundry in here. And then I even have access for the shower plumbing. And then the inside of the cabinets I lined with uh, vinyl wallpaper because I wanted it bright white on the inside of the cabinets. So when you go in there, you can see a little bit better. Over here, there's the original cutting board that came with the trailer. I just redid the face on it and uh, put new knob on it, similar knob to what they had. And then I made all these drawers too. This will be for silverware. There's some more items in here, like a coffee grinder, a lighter, more stuff here. And then down here is the gas leak detector and the carbon monoxide detector. There's also a furnace duct for the Truma Eco Plus combi unit. So this is gas, electric, water heater, and heat. So it has 4,500 BTU single stage one and up to uh, 7,500 BTU stage two. So I get 2.64 gallons of hot water at a super, super hot level that I'm gonna have to mix it with quite a bit of cold water. So I could take a four or five gallon shower. An average shower in an RV takes between two and a half to three and a half gallons. So it's plenty of hot water. And as for the heat, it's electric or gas. This heating system that's on board in the Truma, which is housed right here, right below all this is the Truma. I have a separate video on when I installed the Truma or really rough fit it into the trailer. And it fit in the original compartment where the original water heater was. When I took that out, I was able to put a uh, Truma in there and that handles my hot water and heat same, same time. Back on this ledge here is the control for the Truma. So I could go through and I could turn on the heat, hot water. I could decide if I would use propane or electric. I could change the fan speed or I could just have the fan running at circulating hot air. I could set a timer. So everything is controlled uh, right through here. I could turn the temperature up and down. Uh, so great system. Airstream uses this on their base camp products and customers are very, very happy with it. There's a USB charge port here. So I could charge cell phone, another one of these uh, fans. And then I went with a boost block countertop here in the kitchen. So this is a, a butcher block countertop that's walnut uh, that I was able to buy. It's a regular countertop depth and template over the original countertop and cut it out and use the original kitchen sink. This sink here is a cast iron sink with a porcelain finish and it cleaned up really, really nice. And I was able to get a vintage style chrome faucet and I was able to hold the countertop in with the original aluminum rail here, the coved rail, just by uh, polishing it up. And over here, I went with a vintage style light with the same brass finish. I stripped it and underneath it was a nickel finish and I just highly polished it. And it has uh, AC, DC, you can decide what source you want to use. There's two regular electrical outlets here and then down below, is a shelf that sits over the Truma. So this is the Truma water heater 
furnace and then there's a shelf here. Inside this compartment here, there is a safe. I bolted a safe into the structure of the trailer and it's not impossible to find, but it's very difficult to get to. And the way I bolted it in is very tough to get into. And then I went with all PEX tubing and with my PEX tubing, I used as many brass elbows as I could and I had shutoff valves for each one of the items. So every single item, if I had a problem with this faucet, I could shut this faucet off and still use the whole entire water system of the trailer. There's plenty of headroom here as the shell curves down for the kitchen area. And on this side, I used a Novacool three cubic foot refrigerator. It's a compressor style. It runs on AC and DC, so it runs on battery most of the time. And it has a freezer compartment here and plenty of depth for a lot of items. I was able to go away for four days and I had plenty of room for additional items. I refurbished the original Princess cooktop and uh, you manually light it. You just select which burner. So you got front, rear, front. And uh, I repainted it. I repainted these. I got the little straps here that hold these in place. Those are always missing. And I even left a little gap here in the back to allow the refrigerator to breathe. And I had to cut a recess into the countertop for the rear shade. So when the rear shade goes down, it sits in that little recess there and it gives you privacy back here. And this back window opens, but it's a little funky because the bathroom cuts into it. So you, there's one lever here and there's one lever inside the bathroom. You undo both of them and then you crank up one side. Original aluminum side splash here. I just polished it up in here underneath this box underneath the toilet is the black tank and right, let's talk about uh, capacities that tank is 11 gallons total so you have 11 gallon black tank and you have an 18 gallon freshwater tank on board but the stack the vent stack is uh, behind this wall here and i have a little spice rack another one of these lights i refurbished and then let's talk about the wet bath so this wet bath is a shower and toilet combined back in 1961 there was no gray tanks you would just let water down on the ground um, i contain that water into the wastegate which you'll see when we go outside so for right now the black tank what it is is for the toilet and the sink or well, both of those will drain into the black tank when you're taking a shower i have a portable tub that the shower waste could dump into and you could dump it at a campground or you could direct hook the wastegate right into a campground's waste uh, station uh, but the black tank actually has the full holding area on the wall here in the bathroom i have a light and this is a bright led light now these lights i didn't go with led i just don't like the look of it i like the incandescent better but in this area you might want it a little bit brighter so i have a bright led light then i even have a clothesline that pulls across and it hooks on on this side and that's a good spot you could hang your towel when you're done using it and then uh, my friend made me uh, this aluminum box space for over the toilet because originally it was just asbestos tile and I guess that was supposed to not allow the water to go through and drain out the bottom of the trailer but this doesn't allow any water through it's caulked all the way around and then it rolls down this lip here and there's a drip edge here and right down into the shower pan Por porcelain toilet on board has its own shutoff valve and back in 1961 the plumbing lines ran right through the shower so I replicated that but instead of using the red for the hot side I just used white so it was more uniform looking and then the wand hangs up on the wall with a suction cup or when you're in transport I put it down low original toilet paper holder I polished that up and I polished up all the original aluminum trim all around the whole shower and I even redid this curb here because it was so badly pitted I redid this so I polished up this and I put all new material here in the corner and I polished up this uh, edge beat band here and I even redid the header up top. And eventually one day there will be a regular decorative shower curtain that goes in here. This is the waterproof shower curtain. So the way this works is it pulls all the way across on the track, all the way around. And the track goes all the way down the wall 
So you can bring it all the way around and it closes off this toilet area. And if you look inside, there's Velcro strips here. So if you really wanted to seal this area off, you could, but all this area could get wet because the side of this cabinet is laminate, like kitchen countertop laminate that I applied. I have a separate video on that you could watch, uh, but this is all waterproof here and it's all caulked. So I put Velcro here so you could stop the curtain here or all the way around if you wanted not to get this area wet. And there's even a furnace duct in here. So this whole area, including the tank below, is heated if you want to do some cold weather camping. And then the shower faucet is a vintage style that they use for clawfoot tubs that's mounted right to the wall here and all sealed here. And you could even pause it. So once you get your temperature set, you could pause it using this original lever. Um, and then this is a reproduction style hose that the, I was able to get. And then when you're transporting, you just strap this in place. So it keeps it out of the way. And lots of room, you know, plenty of room in the kitchen, even for two people, this is a, a good amount of space. Now we're gonna switch positions. I wanna show you what's underneath the hood. And when I say hood, that front sofa lifts all the way up and it has all the systems on board. So this is not a space that you're always gonna to have to get into. Uh, so it's not convenient to get to, but when you do, you just take these cushions off. This bottom cushion just fits in the trailer perfectly. And when you lift it up, you just gotta clear the lights. Now that you have all the cushions off the bench, you can see I have holes everywhere. <clears throat> One of the holes is to flip the top down. So once you move your little plants out of the way and the fan, air conditioning, this top flips down. And this is solid oak on the top here. And this gives us access to the inverter. This is the Victron 1200 watt inverter. And I have a wiring harness that goes directly to the battery and a cord here that goes directly to that electrical outlet. And then back here in the wall, you could see the 18 gallon fresh water tank that's on board. And I uh, recreated the whole entire sofa structure. This is the fresh water fill, the fresh water vent. This is the city water connection where it comes in. And this is the wiring harness for the USB outlet. And this is the original Airstream medallion and VIN plate. I punched out a whole new one and uh, I kept the original one. I pulled it, put it in here. Now you have that all set. You reach back here, you grab the prop rod and you lift up on this and you stick this in and that keeps it up and safe for you to work. Now you can see I have a water pump here in the corner. This is the battery charger that's compatible with lithium. This is the Battleborn battery, and I opted to get the one with heat so I could flip this little switch on here. And if it's below a th certain te temperature threshold, it will turn on the heat side of the battery so it will allow it to charge. And then also over here, I have the Smart Shunt, Victron Smart Shunt, and uh, that will I could control from my cell phone with Bluetooth. I could see the battery charge. I have an inline fuse here. And then all the wires all loomed up everywhere. So it's all wiring harnesses. And even in the corner over there, I have a tub that's original Airstream tub that has the stabilizer jacks stored inside of it. So as you can see, there's really no room for any more systems, maybe behind this sofa here, but that's why I wanna store like extra water and tools and stuff like that. So I think that pretty much covers the interior tour. Let's head outside. I wanna walk you around the exterior and show you where all the systems are. All right, the next tier, I, when I went, changed the axle, I went from the original 13 inch rims and tires to 14 inch. Let's get this door out of the way. <clears throat> More of the marker lights, but these are the red. And uh, you know, they're supposed to be this way, but back in 1961, Airstream actually cut the hole and drilled all the holes backwards. So they purposely put them this way. The frame I had media blasted and I repainted with POR 15 and a silver. And then now you can see what I've done here for the gray and black tank. So there's a waste gate here to pull straight out for the black tank and the discharge is right here. And the, the gray, there's no tank. This little box here is where the P-trap is, but uh, this will just drain right into this tube and, and stop right there. 
So there's no, you can hold maybe a half a gallon before it flows up into the shower pan. So what you do is direct hook it right into a way station at a campground or a portable, uh, but then you'd pull this, this handle out to allow it to release. And then over here is the waste hose storage tube that you pull out and that's what snaps on to the waste gate to discharge the waste. And this hole here was the original way that you'd open the wastegate. Uh, it'd have a little key that went in here, uh, but that's been eliminated. The rear trunk <clears throat> originally housed the power cord. And that gains you access. You can now see the black tank. You can see the sink drain and uh, the back of the refrigerator. And I had to redo all the propane lines. So you can see I put shutoff valves for every one of the components on board that runs on propane. And there's low point trains that go through the trailer, through the floor for winterization. There's several low point trains in this trailer. They're gonna make it as easy as possible to winterize. And the original power core, which would have wound up here and then you stuck it out the hole, I went with a detachable style. Has the original taillights. These you can't find anymore. Awesome drip rail here over the back window. I replaced all the gaskets and seals for the glass. New Airstream logo. This is the original stack that would have been for the cooktop ventilation, uh, but it was just a little hole. Um, and uh, so I sealed it up on the inside. And I just put this cap up top here. The water heater, this is the whole exhaust system for it. And I didn't want to just put a panel. I see a lot of people that do Bambies and, and they just put a panel over this. I like the way it looked. It looks kind of cool. So I left it and all I did was drill a hole here so I could run the Truma exhaust. So it has the intake and exhaust all in one here. And then underneath the trailer, there's more low point drains here, but then there's also a jack location. So if you're going to jack up the trailer, they indicate where the frame of the trailer is. I went with the retro style hubcaps. Polished up this strip rail because these are really badly pitted. And then over here, I added an outside utility shower. So uh, this is pretty cool. If you need water outside, this opens up and you can take the wand out and you can hang it up here and you got hot and cold water. And I also put the shutoff valves on the inside of this too, and an easy way to winterize it. But this sealed up this compartment. This is the best solution I could come up with because these doors, they don't seal tight at all. And there was always light coming through and air coming through. So by sealing up the inside of the compartment, I was able to take advantage of that box that I made and slide the outside shower into it. <clears throat> Over here is the original antenna mast, and there have been another bracket up top here, and this is where the cable would have ran through. I'm gonna leave this because I think I'm gonna put a little solar panel up here to charge the battery. So I'm gonna use this as a good mounting point. Uh, that's gonna be for future use. <clears throat> Over here is uh, when I was originally started this trail, I wasn't gonna go with lithium, but I decided to later. But this was the original battery compartment vent that I added, uh, but that I'm no longer using. So I sealed it up on the inside. I also have a city water connection that supplies city water uh, pressure to all the faucets on board. This has a water pressure regulator built into it, so it protects the, the plumbing if it, the water pressure gets too high at the campground. And then this would have been the original battery box, and I had Colin Hyde uh, recreate this battery box lid for me because that was lost. Uh, what happens is this latch comes loose when you're driving and then the wind just blows it off. So I have this one zip tied shut, but this is where you can store tools if you need to. But originally had like lawnmower size batteries on board. Uh, that's what powered the trailer, uh, but that's all been sealed off now. Underneath that is where I put the shore power connection. So I got a stainless steel Marine Co type door here, and that's where I stick the power cord in and when I want to plug in the trailer and I went with 30 amp service so that way if I wanted to add rooftop air conditioning later I have enough amperage on board. These are 20 pound aluminum propane tanks so you got 40 pounds total 
that I have a regulator, I could switch from one bottle to the other, or it automatically switches over. So if I leave this one on and this one on, and this one empties, it will automatically switch to this bottle. So if you wanted to keep the heat running. And then this nut here clamps everything down to this tray here below, but I also have a lock on board that prevent these bottles from getting stolen. This is a Toyota Tacoma. This is a 2018 Toyota Tacoma six cylinder, it pulls up to 6,000 pounds. This trailer's max weight could be 3,500 pounds, so it has plenty of horsepower and torque to pull it. It handles it extremely well. But I don't have a brake controller on board, so I went with the Kurt Echo Bluetooth style brake controller, and uh, this does a great job towing the trailer. So you plug the trailer seven way into the controller, you control the brakes from your phone, or it'll automatically sync when you step on your brakes in the vehicle and that locks into the vehicle seven way. I replaced the safety chains. I went with heavy duty 11,000 pound safety chains. It goes around the hitch jack and through the frame and then hooks right onto the trailer body. And with uh, aluminum drop bar here, that gives me the right height. So you want the trailer to be level. You don't want it nose high or nose down. You want it as level as possible. And uh, two inch ball, like we mentioned before, and I always lock this onto the ball that way for whatever reason this can't pop up when you're driving it has a manual crank jack here and i use a jockey wheel and this clamps onto the jack post and i can wheel it around my driveway if i need to and then the brake for the wheel is this original plate here so that keeps the trailer from rolling around and we get around to the other side, I'm gonna show you the stabilizer jack and the wheel chock that I have on board. I have four of these jacks total. These are all aluminum. And what you do, you put the two in the back where the indicator is uh, riveted to the frame of the trailer. And up front, you put it right onto the A-frame. And this just takes the bounce out of the walk when you're walking around the side. You're not leveling. I have leveling blocks that go under the tires to level the trailer side to side. And I can use the jack up front to level it up and down here. This right here is a trailer breakaway cable. So if the truck and trailer ever came detached, this would pull out and lock the trailer brakes up inside the travel trailer and prevent the trailer from passing you. Uh, so it's very important to have one of these. It didn't have one originally, so I added one aftermarket. Over here, this little door opens up and this is the potable water fill. So this cap comes off and you stick a hose in here and that will allow the 18 gallon freshwater tank to gravity fill and uh, there's a, a relief valve here so air can escape. And then the tank itself has a low point drain and I could drain it down when I'm done camping so I don't leave that water in there long term. This right here is one of the wheel chocks or you could also use it to level the trailer which I don't. But you just put these and wedge them right underneath the tire and that prevents the trailer from rolling around. So I have two of those total. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tour of the 1961 Airstream Bambi renovation that I did. I uh, hope you get a chance to check out the series that I did when I, I was taking the trailer apart and rebuilding a lot of the components. Well, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Please like this video, comment, share, and subscribe. I love it, and we'll see you soon.